It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Welcome. Well, I was just thinking that uh, nine years, nine years after Jade Helm 15. Ah, yes. We now have Project 2025, (laughs) which I like to call the Amero 2.0. Yeah, that's going to happen. Anybody remember the Amero? Yeah, I bought uh, about uh, $20 worth. Which means they're worth nothing. They were worth nothing then. I, I remember a buddy of mine coming to me and he said, my daughter told me, have you heard about the Amero? Have you heard about the Amero? It's like, God, I heard that so many times when that was going on. It's like, guys, it was a Canadian think tank that, uh, you know, because of the Euro, put together, as we knew, a study on whether uh, a shared currency uh, between Canada, Mexico, and the United States could work. And so they called it, hypothetically, the Amero. Mm-hmm. And that thing was just blown out of proportion, just like Jade Helm 15 was. Yeah. yeah. Remember that Walmart was going to be stocking mm-hmm. all the... Mm-hmm. Was it tunnels under Walmart, too, where the... Is it the Chinese or? Yeah, I, I'm getting mixed up. Is was it the Chinese or am I getting that mixed up with the North Koreans in the in Red Dawn 2.0? <laughs> that was the, the Chinese were building tunnels under Walmart. Walmart, right? And and that's not true, but they were stocking the shelves with their products. And it was so stupid because we remember that the one uh, the one county in Texas where a lot of those military exercises were taking place, you know, because remember, this was so, you guys don't know about it, it's so secret. Well, actually, we do know about it because yeah. the Chamber of Commerce of one county, this is for Jade Helm 15, mm-hmm. put out the economic benefits of it. Right. They welcomed them. It and was, It was planned. Yeah. And so, and then the, the Amero was simply, uh, again, the hypothetical studying from a think tank as to whether we could have a, you know, united currency here in North America. And I believe they came up with the answer would be no. And of course, it's something that we'd always be against because we don't believe that a, a currency, I would not want to share a currency with a country whose government we don't have control on to assure that there is more capitalism than money manipulation in that government. <laughs> right. Than yeah. the manipulation of money, which we still get anyway, but <laughs> Right. I mean we know why a Canadian think tank would come up with that, because they'd love to tie their currency to the US. And Mexico would love to tie their currency to our mm-hmm. economy. And but, no. And so, uh, but uh, I think the answer was no, but that got blown all out of proportion. Mm-hmm. Have you seen an Amero? They're going to make us use Amero's, Amero's, um, to the point where it got my friends were coming back to me. Mm-hmm. Did you hear about this? Yeah, I heard about it. What, 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 what do you think? Are they going to take away the, no, this is a hypothetical, a hypothetical exercise by a think tank, which is what? in essence, Project 2025 is from the Heritage Foundation. Yeah, and to all of the conspiracy conspiracy theorists uh, that were on the whole Amero thing, Bitcoin walked up and said, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a global coin, and it'll be secretive. <laughs> it'll be crypto. And now we're all for it. <laughs> And I just bought 10 grand worth. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the the project 2025 and, and 
the reason I brought it up was because Trump went, that's not mine. It's a Heritage Foundation. Yeah. They're basically a think tank. They put together what they would want done in a Republican administration if a Republican won. Mm -hmm. But I believe they put it together, this is put together over a year ago. Yeah. And it was what should Republicans or conservatives want to do? And Trump said, I agree with some of it. I don't uh, agree with all of it. One of the things, you know, is, of course, it's a Heritage Foundation, so they're about policy. One of yeah. them was we got to do something about Social Security. Right. That both parties have said, we're not going to touch it. Well, you're going to have to. Now, you may not cut the benefits, but you're going to have to increase the, the fees. Yeah. The FICA tax will have to go up. You and I always believe that when they eventually do it, they'll start charging companies more. Right. Yep. And like it won't be half and half. Well, it actually is. <laughs> the cost is always paid for by the the consumer in some way. So it's right. yeah. it, it's it's not really going to make a, a, a difference. But the fact is, you know, we love, we in the United States, we figured out, make it a stealth tax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that that's why the left is for corporate taxes. They want more corporate taxes because it's the best stealth, it's the best secret way to tax the middle class and the poor. Right. Where the majority of the money still is. You need that money. And so that's why they love corporate taxes. They love stealth taxes. Direct taxes, when people can look at it and go, we don't like this. It's being taken out of my money. So you mm -hmm. and I, and again, it's pure speculation, but we've always said knowing the way government thinks is like, okay, we need to raise more funds for Social Security. So we're not going to change it at all. We're only taxing the billionaires and the millionaires. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. Um, and it's, well, you know, it's, again, it's this approach of uh, we can do this without affecting you. And you you can't, you no, know, and, no. and I and I think from what I was reading uh, in and I haven't read the whole thing, but uh, I did read about so the, about Social Security and they're talking about, you know, one of the ways would be increasing the age, which, of course, we've been doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been doing over the last 50 years, we've been raising the age of when you can collect Social Security. And so something's going to be done and people go, well, I don't agree with your opinion. It's not my opinion. It's observation of math. Yeah. That's what it is. It's math. And the math isn't wrong. And with the decrease, uh, as we as as we have seen uh, uh, in uh, in births, there's going to be a there's already a problem and there's going to continue to be a problem. Right. And yeah. it's just the reality of it. You're either going to have to you're going to have to have the taxpayer pay more into it. You're going to have to cut benefits. You're going to have to do a combination of both, one or the other, mm -hmm. raise the age. Mm -hmm. There's a number of things you would have to uh, that you would have to do in order to make it uh, go. But you're going to have to touch it in some form or manner or form. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to cut the benefits, you need more revenue. Yeah, right. That has to come from somewhere. Yeah, you, one of the things that's going to have to happen is there is going to have to be a new wave of, of wealth expansion one way or the other because you're going to have to get to the point people's buying power is going to, because we're going to get to a breaking point. We're, we're quickly getting to that point already with uh, personal debt on the rise, uh, now delinquencies on the rise, and people are asking, well, what do we do next? We already are getting second and third jobs, and we still can't make ends meet. Well, the buying power is only going to be restored by an expansion of wealth. It's not going to be. There won't be unless we get into a, a great depression again, and let's hope we don't. But there won't be true deflation. Prices won't come back down. So the only thing that is going to remedy this is, going to be your expansion of wealth that comes through innovation 
Um, but it has there has to be manpower. There has to be a growing uh, a, a, a worker base. We don't have workers, enough workers right now because we're at a really, really low birth rate. And right now, because of the broken border, no one wants to even have the conversation about legal immigration. Well, there's there's two things you're going to need because the population just isn't there. And Trump said this a few years back with the whole Jim, with Jim Acosta. Nobody mm-hmm. paid attention to the substance of that because Acosta was kicked out. But what he was what Trump was saying is we need legal immigration because mm-hmm. you need the people mm-hmm. if we're going to grow the economy. Well, the other thing is, who are you going to sell to? Right. If you're if you're going to grow the economy and we don't have the birth rate here, you're either going to have to have legal immigration, you're either going to have to have uh, legal immigration if it comes to, you know, or temporary workers, they're allowed to come in, but your markets are going to be abroad. If you're involved in trade wars with everybody in the world, how do you grow your markets? Because the market that will truly grow the United States economy now will be the international market. Mm-hmm. So there's a ton of questions that you have to do since both the left and the populist right are at least publicly stating they want trade wars with everybody. Right. right. Yeah. And that's a problem. Yep. You know, how how do you grow it? You do have to grow the economy, but you also have to cut spending. I really see that that, you know, there is going to be a failure. Eventually, I may be dead by the time it happens. It's going to be a failure in the federal government because of debt. And then you'll probably get it back because where it has to be is where since we since we just passed the 4th of July Independence Day, uh, you're going to have to get back to what the original intent of the founding fathers were. I know it's uh, it's old school. Yeah, but it was right. And that is that the majority of handling what goes on in a person's life has to be handled by a state and local government. Right. That is limited on what they can, how they can finance debt that they can't go into. I mean, they can do bond issues, but they can't go into debt like the federal government. Mm -hmm. Never going to work. We can see right now, federal government, the way it's going, it's not working. Right. It's not working fiscally. It's not going to work. It's not my opinion. Again, it's math. Yep. It's the observation of math and numbers that don't lie. Right. And the only way you get back to that, and maybe that's part of where the Republican Party wants to go. I don't know. But it's where let California do what they want. Let Texas do what they want. If you're going to provide those benefits, provide for it, but pay for it now. Don't put it on the backs of future generations I think one of the worst things we've done in this country overall, one of the most immoral things that we have done is taxation without representation on the people that aren't born yet. Yep. Because that's what we've done. It's reprehensible what we've done, and it's something that the American public has no guts to actually face. They just wish to ignore it. And I mean Republicans and Democrats, both. Yep. They talk a good game, but will they do it? Now, I do believe that the Republican Party has more people in it than understand the situation than Democrats. Mm. Yeah. But But that number is is, is dwindling. There's less than there was 30 years ago. Yeah, a lot less. Quite unfortunately. We're becoming a very small group. Yeah. But the disaster that comes with this... Because I don't know how you, you know, we talked about, I don't know what to tell the, the I, I wouldn't know what to tell the Biden uh, a campaign right now because they're wrong on everything. But I don't know what the solution is. I don't know what the solution is. Well, I know what the solution is. I don't know politically how you get there. We all know what the solution is. You got to mm-hmm. cut spending. Yeah. How politically do you do that? Look, you got France and, and and Great Britain. They're both facing a fiscal apocalypse. Yeah. They still wish to go further closer to that. Yep. Why? Because people want what they want now. Yeah, politically, go tell people you're going to cut programs and see how, see how many elections you win. 
You're not. But eventually, you're going to have to get to the point where the uh, originalism of the states really, you know, the, the federal government being the umbrella for armies, whatever, trade disputes between states, that's where you eventually have to get back to because you're going to have to get back to government that pays for everything up front. That the money is there now. You don't borrow from the unborn. You do not do. Taxation without representation was wrong when Great Britain did it against the colonies. And it's wrong when we here in the United States do it against the unborn. The fact that we were sophisticated enough to find that loophole is not something that is greatness in any way. No, no. It's reprehensible. It's immoral what we've done. And we're afraid to talk about it as a nation. We will not confront it. We pretend it doesn't exist. And right now, both parties are doing it. Republicans, to a lesser extent, than Democrats. But both parties are involved in doing it Mm -hmm. now. And more Republicans are okay with it than there were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and 30 years ago. Yeah. You and I remember the response to spending the mm-hmm. way it used to be. Mm-hmm. People would go crazy. Oh, yeah. Not anymore. Nope. 86690 Red Eye. This morning's USDA Farm Report is brought to you by House Products. Tested, trusted, guaranteed since 1920. Once Hurricane Barrel's remnants depart from Texas, what does its prospective path provide in the way of potential impacts, particularly to agriculture? USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey. Tuesday, midday and afternoon, the system likely by then a tropical depression will be moving through the northern Mississippi Delta. By midweek, the remnant low pressure system at that point will be moving through the eastern Corn Belt into the lower Great Lakes region. Likely at that point, any remnant moisture from that system will be absorbed by a cold front. As we move into Thursday and Friday, still we'll see some fairly widespread showers, tropically enhanced, moving into the northeast. Two to six inch local rain totals could be recorded in the eastern Corn Belt belt at northeast and as rippy points out we will see as that track moves more to the northeast more of a positive impact as we'll be seeing that rain falling on soils that have really dried out in the last several weeks across parts of the ohio valley into the eastern corn belt the lower great lakes region i'm rod bain reporting for the u.s department of agriculture in washington dc this report brought to you by cenex fuels and loops Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carlin. I'm Gary McNamara. Coming up following the bottom of the hour, we'll have our audio cut of the day. <laughs> It might be audio cut of the year. I mean, well, it has identified a a demographic of voters that we had not thought of. Yeah. Yes, it has. We'll have that coming up. Plus, Hollywood donors furious at Jeffrey Katzenberg. Mm-hmm. Why? Remember. Uh, he was named campaign co-chair for Joe Biden. The donors are furious because he has been, and get ready for a new word, not ageism. He was age-washing Biden. Yeah. Age-washing. Yeah, okay. I I guess, I, I don't know. Do we need a dictionary... <laughs> Is there is there some kind of living, breathing dictionary document that the liberals have with all these terms they come up with? Living, breathing. the chaos 
Gary McNamara, and Eric Harley. Red Eye Radio. And I'm Gary McNamara along with Eric Harley. Good morning. All right, here we go yesterday. Let's play this from The View. Okay. All right. All right. All right, here we go. Guinan. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Whoopi is still sticking with Biden. Why? I don't care if he's pooped his pants. I don't care if he can't put a sentence together. I have poopy days all the time. Poopy whoopy. You know, the new demographic of voters. If you poop all, if you are pooping, what what is what was the exact lingo? Let me let me get to it again. Here we go. Here we go. Can't put a sentence together. I have poopy days all the time. Poopy days. Well, well, most of us do, but I I I don't know exactly where she was going with that. Yeah. Um. It would explain a lot about the view. <laughs> it would explain a lot of the yelling, <laughs> the anger. Yeah, because if I you, mean, because you're yeah. not going to be happy. No, you're not going to be happy. And if you, that's what's you going have to on. wait an hour, right, before you can do anything about it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't think about that one. Yeah, that's no, yeah. N- no wonder she gets enraged. Right. <laughs> Good thing they don't call it the smell. That would be a problem. <laughs> it, I'm just saying it would be a, if they. It's hey, called the view. We're not being immature. She brought it up. She's the one that said it. We're we're. St- we're just, I didn't make the claim about her. She made the claim about her. This is just Red Eye Radio critical analysis. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not, you know. Now, was 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 that was that scripted? <laughs> I'm guessing not. All right, I've got nothing. Listen, listen, gals, I, I've got nothing today. I the Supporting Biden, well, the only thing I can say is I don't care if he poops in his pants. I don't care if he can't complete a sentence because I got poopy days all the time. I'm doing the same thing. That's, okay. that's, that is my narrative. That is my message today for The View. Yeah, imagine that again. Yeah, it is planned, and and you're having a pre-show meeting at The View. Listen, the president needs our help. Anyone have any ideas? We'll, be, we'll let you go first. Well, I mean, by implying that she's pooping her pants all the time, I mean, yeah. she's one-upping Jeffrey Tubin. And... And 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 when we say Whoopi, we'll let you go first. We mean speak. <laughs> we need to be clear about that now. Oh my god! Oh. It's meanwhile because my my second question would be, what are you eating? Uh, a, from what it sounds like, a very high fiber diet. You could slow that down, <laughs> dial that down just a little bit, just a little. It's okay. You can, you can dial it down. Eat a steak. <laughs> yeah. Or try that whole fasting thing the kids are doing. Right. You know. You don't want to be like Kramer. No. By the way, I I realized last night that the uh, the entire thing of us bringing up Seinfeld apparently really relates. Because mm. mm. I've been noticing when I wake up, and this has been uh, at least a year or so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that our flagship station, WBAP, always is advertising during Seinfeld. Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. Great. So I think there's it's, some kind of tie in there, there is, when we it's, relate. Because I was thinking of Kramer when uh, even eating the 40%, 80%, 100% bran wasn't helping him. And because this is all in the discussion of whoopee, but. Right. Whoopee, I mean, because whoopee rhymes with poopy. Yeah. She's the one that brought it up. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know. <laughs> In other news. I, uh, well, because it changes. <laughs> I keep trying to change the topic. It, he won't let me. It's his it, fault. It, it it changes the entire perspective when you ask her in the morning, how's your day going so far? <laughs> because now <laughs> I would be asking that question probably every hour. Is that the reason you couldn't hold on to Ted Danson? Yeah, it's, is there, and I mean, in other news, big money Hollywood donors are reportedly enraged at movie executive Jeffrey Katzenberg for age washing President Joe Biden. Okay, age washing. Katzenberg, who was named a campaign co-chair due to his prolific fundraising abilities, is being accused by his entertainment industry peers of misleading them by downplaying Biden's age-related decline and failing to sound the alarm in time to allow the Democrats to pick a suitable replacement, the Ankler reported. The Ankler is a Hollywood uh, publication. Everyone in town is furious with him. Furious, a top Hollywood observer told the Ankler when asked about donors' views about Katzenberg, who has long insisted that the president is fine, even though there were apparent signs of cognitive decline that came into full view during last week's debate against Donald Trump. He had this famous quote for everybody, which was, I'm happy to put you in a room with him and you'll see for yourself. But nobody did it. Another Hollywood veteran and longtime Democratic donor told the Financial Times. James Carville, the veteran Democratic Party strategist, told the Ankler that Katzenberg was, here we go again, uh, everything has to do with our bodily functions, uh, uh, peeing up a rope when he told donors not to worry about Biden's condition. Can the, come on, Democrats, can you get off our bodily functions? Yeah, that's we need to come up with new analogies. Yeah. James Carville, a former advisor to Bill Clinton, has encouraged Democrats to move on from Biden long before the debate debacle, which saw uh, the president give halting answers, appear to stare out into space and fumble his words. Mm. Uh, another Hollywood executive who donated to the Biden campaign told the Financial Times, I don't think anybody buys the it was just one bad night excuse. Right. The debate was a tipping point. You've got to expect that Katzenberg is getting hundreds of phone calls saying, I'm not doing this again. The day after the debate, Katzenberg did not show up for a meeting for Biden's campaign that coordinates celebrity endorsement appearances, a source told the Financial Times. Uh, the move raised eyebrows among close Biden observers, particularly given Katzenberg's proximity to the president. Katzenberg, who was given away nearly four million to the Biden campaign and a pro Biden super PAC, was quoted last year as saying that he viewed Biden's age as a quote super power, end of quote. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. He told Reuters last year that Biden was energetic and effective and suggested Republican attacks on his age will backfire. President Biden's age is, in fact, his superpower. That's a quote from Katzenberg. Right. I think people have tried to paint it as a liability or a negative, and I think that they are going to fail at that because his age is his knowledge and experience. As he has said, it is his wisdom. That's a quote. Whoa. Wow. Well, yeah. Hmm. 
it's it, it is <laughs> what you would expect from Hollywood types, though. Right? I mean, this is that's the whole idea. Yeah. As you said before, they lie for a living. Look, they they make it up. They they have to be as creative as they can be. You know, make him seem like the old man on the mountain. Not the old man who can't get down from the mountain. Make him seem like the one who has all the answers. Not the one who forgets where he is all the time and can't come up with names. By the way, you saw that story while we were out. He's, he forgets staffers' names all the time yeah. and, and everything else. Make him seem like the old wise man. Not the old man. Well, you think about it, I mean, this this week, I mean, he's made a strong case. You've seen now Democrats moving a little bit the opposite way. I was uh, uh, heard uh, Scott Jennings on CNN said, mm. yeah, it looks like now, today, he's going to stay in. It changes every day. Yeah. And it's like, it looks like he's going to stay in. Well, next week starts the RNC. Right. I wouldn't be surprised to see everything go underground at that point for a week. No, I was, I was going to say that would be the time for them to just, okay, Let's have the media focus. Let's not give them anything on us. Uh, let's have them focus on on the RNC, on on uh, the beat pick, on Trump, on anything but us. But then again, you look at it because next week, you know, you you get you're within a month. By the time we get to the end of next week, we're yeah. or a month away from the uh, Democrat, mm-hmm. uh, the the DNC, yeah, and. They were talking about a month out is when they wanted to have the virtual, basically, roll call and vote that he's got the nomination sewn up. They do that. There is no Trump news. There is no, there is absolutely no Trump news that's going to move anyone because we've digested all the Trump news, all the good parts about him, all the bad parts about him have already been well digested by the public. Yeah, every it's it, both are a known quantity. The difference is is that there is a clear cognitive decline with Biden. And that is what's changing about Biden. There's nothing changing about Trump. The problem that they have is on the major issues right now that Americans are concerned about uh the Republicans and the the uh, the former president uh Trump have a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. Then when you get to the polling on which uh, president would protect democracy more, the last poll showed Trump is leading by 11 points. Yeah. Well, if you don't have that, what do you have? And now the, the cognitive problems, which are obvious to everyone, how do you change that over the next couple of months? And the next debate is until the beginning of September. And who knows that that's oh. even going to take place? Yeah, I. But you know, the defiant Bidens are going to make sure that it does. And can I add into there that the thirty-four felony counts? No, you don't have the Democrats out there saying, but he's running against a convicted felon. In fact, they had the debate on that. It looks like the debate point that one was, nah, it's not working for us. Right. That's the problem that the Democrats have right now. Mm-hmm. I don't see how they recover if Biden stays in. Right. I don't know how they recover if Biden gets gets out, but they're not going to use the 25th Amendment on him, so they've got no other choice. And anything else that would happen, because you've heard those things, well, yeah, they're legally tied to him, but they may not want to be, and so, well, then all hell's going to break loose at the DNC. Yep. And wow. 86690 Red Eye. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara. This is one of the most interesting things I've ever seen in 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 covering politics because you don't know where it's going to go. You can see mm. that after yesterday, you've got some of the parties saying, OK, we can't really move on from from Biden. We can't do it here in the next couple of weeks. And if we can't do it in the next couple of weeks, we can't do it at all. But then what about the donors? 
if the donors clearly see, and then when the party realizes that it's going to affect the down ballot, losing the executive branch is one thing, losing the House and the Senate and losing them big time has to be of a major concern right now to the Democratic Party. What do you do? I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know, but, but it's why you see Democrats in the House, a handful of them officially, and you know behind the scenes it's a lot more, that are greatly concerned. And uh, someone making the case yesterday, in the light blue states, it could start to change things. And you don't want that. Your party is going to suffer, and he's not going to win. What do you do about it? This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.